Well, since today is the day Thor Love and Thunder is released worldwide, I decided to make a franchise showdown for the MCU trilogies before I even record any thoughts about Thor Love and Thunder. So that's what this video is about. Hey everyone, s -Dub Nation here. Welcome back to a brand new Marvel video here in the channel. Like I said, franchise showdown ranking of all four MCU trilogies. I'm not adding in the Avengers films. Definitely not adding in Thor Love and Thunder because I have not yet seen it. I am seeing it later today. We're going to be ranking the Iron Man trilogy, Captain America, Thor, and Spider-Man trilogies ranked in this video. And we're going to do it in a franchise showdown way. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also don't forget to check out that Marvel playlist that's going to pop up up above. And with that being said, guys, let's get right into the rules and regulations. So this is how we're going to start it off. We're going to do it by six rounds. The first round is going to be the average of the Rotten Tomatoes critic scores of each film. And then our second round is going to be me ranking the first films. The third round is going to be me ranking the second films. The fourth round is going to be me ranking the third films. The fifth round is going to be me ranking the trilogies based on consistency. And the sixth and final round is going to be the audience reactions. Just in case we have any ties or anything like that. I, Me personally, I know if we have any ties. But just in case we have any ties on the scoreboard... I am going to average out the audience reactions from Rotten Tomatoes as well. With the rules and regulations out of the way, let's get right into the franchise showdown. Alright, so kicking it off our first round, we're going to be looking at the Rotten Tomatoes score of each trilogy. So coming in last place, we have the Thor trilogy with 78.6%. And then in third place, we have the Iron Man trilogy with 81.6%. The Captain America trilogy is next with 86.3%. And in first place, we have the Spider-Man trilogy with 91.6%. So now our scoreboard reads Thor in last place with 4 points, Iron Man in 3rd place with 3 points, Captain America in 2nd place with 2 points, and Spider-Man in the lead with 1 point. Our second round, we're going to look at the first movies of each trilogy. So coming in at number 4 for me has got to go to Thor. I really love this film. The grandeur, the Shakespearean atmosphere of it all is really great. And the freaking score is epic, man. Marvel still has not touched the quality of this score since the first Thor movie. Maybe with Endgame, but that's because it's a little bit more, again, epic. But once we get to the New Mexico stuff, we kind of lose some of the magic. Kick it off my top three list for me. It's got to go to... Captain America, the first Avenger. The first hour of this film is an amazing, amazing origin story. Probably the most perfect origin story. Because here you have a protagonist that is genuinely good. And we understand his motives right out the gate. After that first hour, we montage through the good stuff. The stuff that makes Captain America, Captain America, the war. We montage through it. But as a period piece in the MCU, it stands out in phase one. Coming in at number two for me has got to go to Spider-Man Homecoming. A huge refresher for the MCU. Taking a break from the larger heroes and seeing how the civilians see these gods, quote-unquote. And centrally, seeing the MCU through a high schooler's point of view. To me, this movie is just pure Spider-Man stuff. It's just pure fun. Going back to his core and just having him go through the struggles of moving too fast because he wants to get inside of the Avengers and having to stay low to the ground and homecoming and trying to find a date to homecoming. But coming in at my number one for me has got to go to Iron Man. The original MCU film is still the best. This is a film that's fun, charming, and action-packed. It doesn't have the weight of the entire MCU on its shoulders. And it could just be a vehicle for Robert Downey Jr. to be himself. That's the best part about this film. It doesn't have any ties to the rest of the MCU. They just have a short little tease to the Avengers. But overall, we get to tell the story of this great character. Our new scoreboard reads Thor still in last place with 8 points, Cap in 3rd place with 5 points, Iron Man in 2nd place with 4 points, and Spider-Man still in the lead with 3 points. We're moving into the 3rd round, so now we're looking at the 2nd movie of each trilogy, and coming in last place again, we have Thor The Dark World. I actually enjoy this film. It is the worst MCU film. 
but I found it pretty enjoyable. And also the visuals, like, Asgard maybe doesn't look as great as the first Thor, but it still looks fantastic here. I really love the visuals inside of this film. I think a lot of things that they did with Thor, I really like that. I Look, serious Thor, funny Thor, I like funny Thor a little bit more, but I really like serious Thor in these first two Thor movies but the story and plot is boring the villain is bad and the side characters I could care less about at number three is Spider-Man Far From a Home while it is fun and funny and has some great Spider-Man stuff I hardly see this as a true Spider-Man feature it gets to the point where I start questioning is this still Spider-Man is this still a Spider-Man movie or is it Peter Parker and his friend is on a road trip in Europe? Like I said, it's very fun. It's very funny. I will pop this movie in and have a good time with it. And the Mysterio stuff is pretty epic and pretty great. I just wish that they went more Spider-Man-y than just, you know, road trip and coincidences. My runner-up at number two is Iron Man 2. Some might call me a madman. But I would rather watch Iron Man 2 than Far From Home, only because it's more Iron Man. We get more Iron Man, more characters, more suits, more villains, more allies, more teases, more Easter eggs, and, and more plots. Clearly, this film is trying to put everything together, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Bottom line is, it's an enjoyable movie, but a prime example of Marvel wanting to set up a cinematic universe while also trying to tell individual stories. And coming in at my number one is Captain America The Winter Soldier. This film made Captain America cool to me. Now, I always thought that he was a boring character, even after I watched Civil War, frankly. But then I watched Winter Soldier. The fights, the action, the high intensity of this spy political thriller is perfect for a modern day Captain America film and for a modern day Captain America the Winter Soldier manages to change how we view Captain America and how he views America, but never once changes his values, and that's what makes this film special to me. While the world changed around him, he basically stayed the same. Our scoreboard now reads Thor in last place with 12 points, Captain America, Iron Man, and Spider-Man all tied with 6 points. Now we're moving into the fourth round. We're going to be looking at each third movie in each trilogy. And coming in at last place, we have Iron Man 3. Now Shane Black knows how to write Iron Man dialogue, Robert Downey Jr. dialogue, and knows how to direct and write great action sequences. The action sequences are high intense. They're great. They just keep up in the ante with the action sequences. This MCU film not only takes risks, but also throws you for unexpected plot twists, delivering another enjoyable, snarky, and fun Iron Man MCU film. But this third entry in the films, while not terrible and definitely not bad by any means, is the first MCU film I saw in theaters. Out of the other third trilogy films, it's the worst. At number three, we have Thor Ragnarok. It kind of breaks my heart to put it down this low, but the other ones are a little bit better. Ragnarok is the funniest MCU film to me, but it gets to the point where it's deemed as too funny. Like, ha ha, he he, all right, now let's get serious. You know what I mean? Like, come on, let, let's get serious for real. And when it does get serious, they quickly undercut the emotion with a joke. This film made Thor cool again for me, and it will forever be my favorite of the Thor films, depending on how Love and Thunder may change my mind. I'm seeing it in a couple hours as me recording this video but the humor definitely comes first and not the emotion my runner-up at number two is spider-man no way home now a lot of people might have this at number one no way home may cheat a little bit to get to the second and third act but once they wrap up far from home and get to the second act it's some of the best spider-man stuff we've ever seen as well as the best mcu stuff we've ever seen Obviously, you have the emotional depth of Aunt May and how the movie just lets you sit in it. Something that Ragnarok barely could even do. And we also get some great crowd-pleasing moments like the two other Spider-Men showing up. Overall, it's the perfect crowd-pleaser. It's my favorite theatrical experience ever. It just cheats a little bit to get to the good stuff. But coming in at my number one for me has got to go to another Captain America feature, Captain America Civil War. I mostly thought this film was boring when I first saw it, 
But it is by far one of the most important and incredible MCU films. Iron Man vs. Cap wasn't planned, but thanks to the MCU, their movies and the Avenger films perfectly set up a reason for why these two would think the way they do and eventually come at heads. And we can see their reasoning because we've seen their growth in their movies. While people may say it's Avengers 2.5, it's still the Captain America movie first. We have great crowd pleasers like the airport fight scene and the fight in the bunker. And while it can be fun seeing our heroes come to a head, it also provides a gut punch of emotions. And eventually the drama makes you cry in the end when you see both Iron Man and Captain America punch each other. Our scoreboard now reads Thor in last place with 15 points, Iron Man in third place with 10 points, Spider-Man in second place with 8 points, and Captain America in first place with 7 points. Our fifth round, we're going to be looking at the consistency of each trilogy, so coming in at last place, unfortunately, is Thor. The Thor franchise, again, is at the bottom. The Thor from the first two films are drastically different from the one in Ragnarok. The films literally change from Shakespearean drama to comedies. And to me, that's not at all consistent. Coming out of Ragnarok, you would have a different experience coming out of the Dark World. In fact, I say the first two films didn't even focus that much on Thor and his world, but really only the human's introduction to Thor and how they react to Thor, as in Jane, Darcy, and Selvig. In Ragnarok, we really got a peek into Thor's world being inside of space, but it's a big change from being on New Mexico and London with Jane for the past six years. Coming in at number three for me has got to go to the Captain America trilogy. On paper, the films may seem consistent because these are Captain America-focused movies. I feel like where the inconsistency starts is when we get into Winter Soldier. While I love those films, and while I love that film, we are transitioning from a 1940s war epic to a political thriller. And now we're seeing how Cap has evolved with the times. An example, combat and intellect. Then Civil War is like people say, Avengers 2.5. BVS really inspired the MCU to make Civil War, so I feel as though if we didn't get Civil War, we probably would have gotten another political thriller in Serpent Society. At number two, we have the Iron Man trilogy. This trilogy is Tony Stark's story through and through. In fact, they literally closed off Iron Man 3 in such a way that Robert Downey Jr. could leave the role. The Iron Man trilogy may have movies with too many cooks in the kitchen like Iron Man 2 and may feel a little bit off like Iron Man 3, but all of the movies are enjoyable and mostly they all tell the story of the relationship between Tony and his suits, his PTSD, and his strive to do better and right his wrongs. All of it is cultivating into where he stands on the Sokovia Accords in Civil War. Now, the Iron Man trilogy in my last franchise showdown ranking from two years ago, this originally was going to be at number one. But my number one is just a tad bit more consistent. And coming in at my number one has got to go to the Spider-Man trilogy. The whole trilogy is his origin story. Come on. Homecoming is about Peter learning to slow down and understand when his time is coming. Just to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man focused on the now. And Far From Home is learning that he can't avoid his responsibility and at some point he has to accept it. And No Way Home is about him growing up and accepting that responsibility, accepting the fact that deaths happen, sacrifices have to be made. We started this trilogy watching a boy calling himself Spider-Man when in actuality every movie was leading up to this boy becoming a man. And he needed the other two Spider-Men to help him out. Basically, he needed himself. He needed himself to pick him up to help him understand that it's time to grow up and become a man. A Spider-Man. Point blank period. This is the most consistent trilogy out of all of them. Our new scoreboard now reads Thor in last place with 19 points. Iron Man in third place with 12 points, Captain America in second place with 10 points, and Spider-Man in first place with 9 points. Our last and final round, we're going to be looking at the audience reactions. So Thor, again in last place with 79.3%, Iron Man in third place with 80%, 
Captain America in second place with 85.3% and Spider-Man in first place with 93.3%. Our last scoreboard reads Thor in last place with 23 points, Iron Man in third place with 15 points, Captain America in second place with 12 points, and Spider-Man taking the first place spot with 10 points. The Spider-Man trilogy comes out on top, thus ending our franchise showdown. Alright guys, that is it for the franchise showdown. Please note that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion. And you're free to comment down below your very own ranking on the MCU trilogy. You can even add in the Avengers movies. Who cares because Thor is getting a fourth movie anyway. So might as well add in the Avenger movies. Please don't forget to check out that Marvel playlist that's going to pop up on your screen up above. And also that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. And I am seeing Thor Love and Thunder in a while. So... I honestly cannot wait. I pre-recorded this video. The intro and the outro are recorded the day of. With that being said, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. And as for you, Thor Love and Thunder, see you at the movies.